are you interested in getting a brief overview of all the elements which are used in a professional full-on track, then stay tuned because maybe you're missing out on the most important elements. So let me show you which elements I use in a Psytrance track. And uh, this is a special track because that's the track I'm making with my students in my course. So I'm showing basically every step in here and every element we listen to, how it is made and how it is arranged. And currently we are at mixing, so the track is not fully mixed yet um, but I think you will get a very good um, overview of all the elements uh, we use in tracks. Um, so the most important one and I think the most simple looking is the kick and bass. Um, so it's a very kind of like simple synthesis with the devil in the detail. Um, so I think there's not like a hundred ways uh, you need to know how to make a good uh, kick or a good bass because uh, a kick is basically just a sign sweep and a bass Base is just a saw wave with a filter and some processing behind it but to make it right is really hard um, and that's why we're also spending like a whole month on that one but let's listen to the kick and bass because it's kind of driving the track I mean with a like a craft kick and bass your track will go nowhere So I think that needs to be like really roaring and clicking and cutting through the mix and being really strong. Otherwise, um, your whole track will have not the level you want to have. It's like you're building a house and this is the uh, the cellar. It's kind of like the, the pillars, the foundation. And together with the drums, which we will have a look now, um, this is the complete foundation. So if you have a good kick and bass and good uh, drums, then this is like, half the track already we could say well let's say it's maybe not half the track work wise but it's half the track um sound wise if that doesn't really um transmit and that's why we also spent like another month on drums and uh, because drums like it's really easy to select a snare or some hi-hats or whatever but it's not easy to select the right one and to process it the right one and to bring them all into the right mix um so let's see in here I want to give you a quick overview of the elements I'm using here. So we have a crash. Uh, this is something in the beginning to really um, make an impact on a sec. We have the snare, it works together with the kick. And then we have um, hi-hats, which bring kind of like the fastness into the groove. It could be also shakers and stuff. Everything which kind of like repeats very, very fast and has like a high tone. Then we have the open hi-hat, which really reinforces the groove. So let me show you quickly. I think the best way is to show you if you have the drums, but then I switch it off. So you see how it's driving the groove, the open hi-hat, and then we have some top loops which make it like a little bit less static and also enhance the groove. And here is also like the devil is in the detail, you need to find like the right uh, loops and samples which really work um, like a machine with each other. So now we come to the more interesting thing and it's the lead. So that's kind of like the main story of your track. Um, so we're building like the whole whole arrangement here. But I think the main thing is besides that we're building up the drums and um, building them down like in the break and coming back. I will explain more in another video about arrangement um, about this. Um, but the leads kind of is is the ing main ingredients you could say which, which form the story of your track. And and, uh, there's like different types which are really important and I think one very important one is FM leads um, so they are kind of the the strong gritty sounds in your track which really have power but they don't really transmit melody um, so for example here we have this one so uh, or here we have a whole riff um, made of that And it sounds like this. So 
So we will spend also like a whole month on like rhythm and how to make cool rhythms and cool rhythmic sounds like FMs and uh, also a whole month on melodies, how to make cool melodies because melodies is then the other side. So we have like this hard and energetic side and uh, yeah, melodies can also be energetic but I think melodies also um, through the total thing are kind of like emotional. So you can um, give like a lot of emotion into the track uh, with melodies. Um, so for example, a melody thing would be this. You can already hear the sound is uh, different, so you could have something plucky like here or um, other types uh, which are kind of like a little bit more simple waves usually in the presets, um, um, which yeah, which you can make tonal sounds which you then can tell a story with the tonal sound. Another category of um, really uh, important sounds, I would say, in Psytrance is this kind of FX sample and hold type sounds, but which are not like single shot effects, which will come in the second two, which also are, I would say, in the melody category, but a little bit more random maybe and not so planned. Um, so for example, this would be one. And besides that, um, pads are also really nice. Uh, they can drive the energy in arrangement like risers or they can give emotion to some parts. Um, they're kind of like slow melodies, we could say, with a very soft preset. Um, so they have like a long attack, which means kind of like that it takes a long time to rise from like zero volume to like the highest uh, point in volume. Uh, they sound like this. As I just see this, there would be like a boom kick really nice in that spot. Um, so that's kind of, I think, the major elements um, you have in Psytrance tracks. Um, if we want to split up the melody part a bit more, then you could also count in acid melodies. This is like a special kind of synthesis, which comes from like a hardware synthesizer it's called the TB303. Um, I don't know if I have like an example in here. Um, let me see. In that track, I unfortunately don't really have one, but I will quickly bring uh, one for you in here so that you can see, because they are also used used uh, very much in uh, Psytrance tracks um, because Psytrance has also its roots into in this kind of like acid music as well and uh, they sound uh, like this. But there are also really important elements in my opinion which, he, which I use in a lot of tracks uh, but not in this one here uh, particularly. Um, but I think you can do with FM sounds, uh, with lead sounds, like plucky or not plucky lead sounds, or acid lead sounds, and then with pads you can already tell a really good story and then you can also add like the sample and hold uh, sometimes, uh, which is really nice, and some other elements. If you are more interested into which kind of like lead elements you find, then what I would do is I would open up like a bank in a synthesizer and just look for the prefixes you see there. Here in the menu you have like different um, things here so they can give you a little bit of a glimpse um, where differences could be like for example this asset here or like a lead or sometimes they they have like prefixes in here as well uh, for like atmosphere for example. So there's many kind of like subdivisions but I would say this is kind of like the major groups. Um, if you think I missed something, let me know in the comments. And if you want to know how to make really cool acid leads, I have a video which I will link up here. 
So we will spend another two months on like recreating really like rhythm and melodies um, so that you are really equipped for your arrangement and then we have a whole month on doing the whole arrangement later. Then we have only two groups left or I mean you can group this as you like but two groups in my arrangement and I would say they're both from like the same category so it's both effects and what I count under effects is everything which is not used like in a melodic or really rhythmical sense. I put all those into the leads category, but things like one shots, for example, so like this. were sometimes also used to make a whole communication in mostly the beginning parts of a track. But I also put in this category risers, like uh, for example this white noise riser. Or the sine riser. And I have this category sub effects. This is basically all effects which could potentially have some low end. Um, so for example, um, kick rolls, boom kicks like this. Well, like a fill, like we have it in here. So we have this one. So I would say if you have all those elements in your track, you're well equipped to have a full story. And if you're interested how to make the story and how to make arrangement and how to get to all the elements you need in the arrangement and the foundation, then you can check out my course. Um, I give out a few lectures as like a free bonus if you sign up on my website um, to my newsletter. Um, so you find my website in the description box below or in the link up there. And I hope you sign up and get a few free lectures and some uh, cool emails in the future in which I show you some production tips, uh, which I haven't set up yet, but you will get them soon. And if you have any questions, you can also just drop me an email. My email is in the description box below. And it's the most intensive killer course I ever launched. And I already made some beginners to really good producers, in my opinion, and they have uh, made killer material. Um, and I really hope to see you in my course because it's a dream for me actually um, to make a lot of producers like good as I learned a lot from uh, very good producers. I want to give that to you. I want to make you like the next uh, the next big producer. And also I'm learning a lot uh, and having a lot of fun with you guys. Uh, so hope to see you in my course uh, or at least on the sign up. And if you're interested in how to create leads, I will link to a playlist up here, which you can watch next, which give you a lot of tutorials on how to create cool leads and rhythms.